And every Friday, we're going to go to Costo's Corner, where he runs through every single game of the round for us. But, Jace, before we do that, news overnight. No international rugby league at the end of the NRL season this year. What the hell is going on, mate? We've just had a World Cup. Wouldn't you want to capitalise on that? Well, you would. But, of course, we're talking about the NRL here, and they've got their fingerprints all over this. And I'm sure Troy Grant and the IRL... And Greg Peters, who's a, a, an important ke- a cog in the wheel in your part of the world, yep. I'm sure they'd like to to get things going and build on the momentum from last year, particularly with you know, Samoa getting to that historic yes. final at Old Trafford. Yep. But just to clarify this, Martin, this is important. Mate, the Europeans are actually playing international rugby league, and that includes England and France and even Ukraine, who I've called previously, I've touched on this, playing against Russia and so forth. But it's the Southern Hemisphere that's a cot case and if you believe the people in Sydney, it's all to do with the CBA and that standoff between the NRL and the RLPA. Well, that's been put to bed, apparently. You know it. Your listeners know it. They're not mugs. And I'm, my challenge to Bav, to Volandis is, mate, come come good. Show, show us your, your, your fair dinkum about the international game. You're going to have the multicultural round in a couple of weeks in round three. Is it lip service or do you genuinely believe that, you know, we're a game for all people from all corners of the earth because we want to see international rugby league, not just the Kiwis, but the, the Melanesians, the Polynesians, you name it. Because I think the international game, we saw some brilliant stuff on and off the field last year. We need more of it, including yeah, the Southern totally Hemisphere. Agree, and Costa, look, I, you know, I get all conspiracy theory about this, mate. And I know look, the, AR, the ARL especially has never, ever wanted the Pacific Island nations to get good, just like World Rugby has never wanted Samoa, Tonga and Fiji to get good. They're more than happy. You're right, lip service. It's very patronised. More than happy having you you lovely blokes come along. But you look at rugby, 1991, Samoa made the quarterfinals of the World Cup. How much investment's gone into the game in that part of the world since? I'm looking at International Rugby League. um, um, uh, Tour Samoa made the final last year. Glorious, as you say. And these top NRL players choosing to play for they're nations of birth or na- nations of heritage. We're all into this, mate. Samoa plays Tonga here in Auckland, and it's brilliant. The place goes absolutely nuts over it. Capitalise on it. Yeah, this is an increasing ch- audience. You, you, everything about it is good. Why don't you bozos know this? Martin, I'll tell you this. You mentioned Bozo. That was the nickname, of course, of the, yes. the former, the late immortal Bob Fulton. He wouldn't He wouldn't be condoning this ridiculous situation, this uh, Mexican standoff. And I'll tell you something else that your listeners won't know. All right. And that is the Australian taxpayer pays for people to promote our game, develop the game in the Pacific Islands through NRL development. They're branded up as NRL. But guess what? The heavy lifting is done by the taxpayer, not by Peter Valandis. More needs to be done. And, and, and we've got to stop basically sucking the blood out of the, these nations, using them as a quarry from mm, a, like, yeah. almost like, a, you know, we're, right, they're man. a mining company. Yeah. It's like the NRL being a mining company and they suck, suck, suck and put stuff all back. Let's do Costo's Corner and I can't wait for this, mate. This is going to be a regular Friday thing that we do where you go through round by round and about a couple of minutes on each game. So your thoughts and reflections first on what we saw yesterday, uh, last night rather, Eel Storms, the opener. Well, I got to call Harry Grant's father many moons ago and he was a different type player, but he's got a big engine, his old man, and that's where he gets it from. Mum's pretty pr- a competitive lady as well, particularly for those people who love touch football in that part of the world. Harry Houdini, how he got through the teeth of the Parramatta defence. Don't forget, I don't know how many of your listeners didn't see the game uh, from go to woe. I'm in that category. I saw the highlights. I was actually helping a friend out through rugby league last night. But the fact that Melbourne only got in front, Marty, with the winning play in Golden Point yeah, was fascinating. Yeah, and yeah. don't forget Craig Bellamy, who's been coaching since 1991 in the bush, his record in round one with the Storm, that's 20 round one victories. Unbelievable yeah, crazy. that Craig Bellamy can keep do this, despite the turnover in playing staff. I think that's quite remarkable in itself. And Moses, he should have been in a better position to have a shot at field goal when he did. 55 metres out, I had visions of Joe Lydon kicking over in the UK, but it wasn't to be for Parramatta. And, and, my, and Mike Acevo, look, rocks and diamonds, perhaps distracted by the fact that he signed a big, fat contract extension during the week. All right, then, let's go. Next game. Warriors Knights tonight kicking off. Well, I'm looking forward to it. I wish I was at the 10 with the Mad Butcher and everyone else. I'd love to be calling the game tonight. Uh, fond memories of that place. Look, 
the Warriors last year, they had the worst defensive record in club history. And I think new coach tonight, he makes his debut, of course, in the NRL in the big time in Andrew Webster. I think he's got something like seven debutants basically being blooded for the club. I, I think all eyes should be on uh, Chance Nickel Klukster. I think he's a terrific player. Canberra didn't want him. They see a bigger future with Xavier Savage, who incidentally is injured at the moment for the Raiders. But I think that the fullback for the Warriors is key tonight. Ponga obviously is moving into number six for the Newcastle side under Adam O'Brien. I tell you what, he's going to see more traffic than Spaghetti Junction. (laughs) Who wins it, though, quickly? Well, I've tipped the Warriors. I think they can win. I think the fact that uh, Newcastle have only won, uh, uh, the, you know, the, 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 the well, last year. I mean, I've tipped Newcastle to pick up the wooden spoon. So I don't mean to be cruel here, but if the Warriors can't beat yep, Newcastle yep. first up yep. at the cake tin, mm. they're a long way from home. It's a big trip to get down to Sydney to come over. Uh, you mean, look, DWZ is out because of a calf problem. Uh, he picked it up in the in the preseason. Uh, Edward Corsi comes in. Uh, I think the debutants, uh, you know, obviously a lot of pressure on those blokes. But Chance Nickel Klukster, key man for me at the back, and I think the Warriors can get home in a close one to start their season. Panthers Broncos bet three six five. We've just put the Panthers up to two dollars on the nose for the win. That's gimme money, and come on, this is the Panthers. It is the Panthers, and, uh, you know, uh, Brisbane uh, have had a poor record in recent times at the foot of the mountains. In fact, they haven't won, Martin, at Penrith since 2009. And we talked about the Warriors just a moment ago. Well, Walsh, back in uh, Queensland, of course, and the Broncos, he fractured his eye socket against the Gold Coast in the preseason challenge. He's a non-starter for Kevin Walters, obviously, uh, going into this game. Penrith... Here's a big stat for you. Despite the disappointment of losing that World Club challenge and how they react to that will be interesting, they have 11 of their starting 13 in the grand final last year backing up tonight in round one to kick off their premiership defence. But notably, Martin, I'll point this out, the two players that are missing are obviously... K1 and K2, if you like. Yeah. Api yeah, Corosau yeah. and, 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 and Viliami Kikau. They are the notable absentees. And Garner is a good player. He's come back uh, or come over from the West Tigers. But that left edge for Penrith won't have anywhere near as uh, the potency as it has previously. But I expect Penrith to win. I think Penrith uh, 1 to 12 against the Broncos tonight at the foot of the mountains. Costo Corner with us. So he's picking Warriors, he's picking Panthers. Those two to start with. Super Saturday, they call it. Sea Eagles, Doggies, kicking off 5 o'clock. This is New Zealand times I'm talking about, so 3 afternoon for you guys, or actually even earlier in Queensland. But Sea sea Eagles, Doggies tomorrow. Well, Anthony Seabold, my old mate, I've known him for over 30 years since he basically was a young player at the Brisbane Broncos who was scouted by the legendary Cyril Connell. I'm really pleased that Seabes is back in the NRL and coaching. Turbo has been named to play for the home side. This game is at Brookie, but uh, Manly haven't won a round one game uh, in a decade. I think they can rectify that tonight. Canterbury with Kikau missing when he went off in the trials uh, weren't quite the same. They will take time with Reid Marnie and other players coming into the mix. You know, they're going to need time to settle into some sort of playing style at Belmore. Luke Thompson is out. He's done done an ankle uh, training during the week. He needs surgery on that. That's a setback for Canterbury-Bankstown. Sereldo, of course, he is making his debut coaching Canterbury. Let's not lose sight of that. But it is on the peninsula, and I think Manly... After winning the preseason challenge, read what you like into that. I think they're a safe bet at 1 to 12. 14 2, Costco's corner. All right, so we've got the Warriors, Panthers, and Eagles, all the home sides so far. Cowboys versus Raiders. I've been arguing with Lachlan all week about this. I like Sticky Ricky, mate. I think that he has got something there. Well, a top eight for them, I think, although I don't know whether they've got enough to go up to Townsville and win tonight. Well, I haven't picked him in the top eight. I've, and uh, anyone who wants to haven't. follow my tips and whatnot, you just go to Costo Jason on Twitter. Costo There's Jason some opinions on Twitter, there. Yep. Opin- you know what it, we, we know what opinions are like, particularly <laughs> on your show. <laughs> <laughs> They're like something. Everyone's got one. You know. Um, and, some interest, and some interesting views on the international rugby league community as well. But coming back to the game, look, North Queensland, I've tipped them uh, to make the grand final against South Sydney. I think they'll have a great year. A lot of people were shocked with their performance last season. I think Canberra, uh, they've got an issue at the back. Seb Chris will play fullback tonight in the absence of Xavier Savage, and it's been compounded, Martin, by uh, Rapana being rubbed out because of his misdemeanours in the trials. 
the way the world is now, you just can't you just can't push the envelope. So they've got some issues at the back. Will Chris even play fullback? I don't know. But North Queensland look much settled at home, and I think the Cowboys thirteen plus. Let us go on then from there. Four in a row at home. Sharks versus Rabbitohs. Last week you picked Cronulla to finish sixth and you think that the Rabbits are going to finish second. So this is probably the yeah. match of the round then in that case. Well, that's right. And I think South Sydney, I'll go back to what I said on your program last week. And, uh, you know, South Sydney played in the trials with plenty of intent. Uh, Latrell Mitchell, you mean, I'm tipping Cameron Munster to win the uh, the Dally M. Uh, well, is he going to get enough games was... after last night, Costa? I mean, he's got one finger going well, the other way, well, mate. Well, he came back, mate. He, you know, he's from central Queensland. You know what I mean? Uh, he's no he's no powder puff. I'll give you the tip, mate. Go on. Uh, you know, and so, um, you know, he, he's a tough cookie. He's a very, very creative and, and skillful player. But uh, in terms of Latrell, he looks terrific. He looks in the, perhaps at the peak of his powers. He looks like a man on a mission. You know, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if he wins the Churchill Medal this year if he doesn't win a Dally M. You know, he's looking really good there at Mudgee in particular. I know they were playing the Dragons, who were basically powder puffs themselves that day. But oh, uh, look, I, I just I just think South Sydney are looking the goods. And, uh, you know, I mean, you look at their forward pack with Totola and uh, Keon uh, Kalamatangi and uh, they Cam Murray. Look, they've just got a galaxy of stars and Cody Walker and the halves, fantastic side. I think they'll I think they'll get Cronulla. It's a tough assignment first up against a Cronulla side that did really well last year, but I think South Sydney won to twelve. All right, Costa Costo's corner people for the first time he's picking the rabbits. That's the first away side that he's picked. And let's actually uh, you know, uh just stop for a moment and you know and pay and pay homage to that St George side, who I think are breathing a huge sigh of relief for the fact that they're not playing this weekend. Because <laughs> I mean, honestly, mate, they are going to be the worst side in the comp. Leave, leave, I mean, that, that's my tip. I just think they are going to be the worst. But let's go to the Dolphins Roosters. We just had Greg Martin on, and he's picking the Dolphins to finish one above the Warriors and picking the Warriors to finish last. He does it every year. Roosters, Roosters at Dolphins. Surely Wayne Bennett can't. Pull another rabbit out of the hat here because that rooster side on paper is bloody good. They're playing for the Arthur Beetson Cup here, Martin, just to put uh, paint a picture here for your listeners, uh, particularly if you're relatively new to rugby league. Arthur Beetson came down to Sydney from Redcliffe uh, back in the 1960s, you know, and uh, it's a great story. He was the first Aboriginal and Indigenous Australian to captain his nation in world sport. Uh, you know, it was, I had the pleasure of interviewing the great man many years ago at his home, and uh, he was always beaming when he talked about that. Uh, uh, and that's well before we had uh, the All-Stars game and the Indigenous, obviously, uh, showcasing their culture. In fact, I'm wearing the Indigenous Cowboys jersey as I come to you live from New South Wales this afternoon. So the, the Beatson Cup is on the line. Uh, obviously, Arthur with a great connection to both uh, the boys from Bondi and Redcliffe. Look, there's been a lot of hype with Redcliffe, but I think they're only a couple of injuries away from perhaps finishing, you know, last, second, last, third, last. I think they will avoid the spoon, but the Roosters, far more settled. They've got the firepower. I think the Dolphins will put up some resistance, but after what I saw against the Gold Coast, you'd have to be off your rocket to tip them, so I'm tipping the Roosters 13+. plus. Just quickly, Jason, that this Dolphin side, people, when you're talking about Redcliffe, I mean, so it's not just a cobbled together side. It's not the Gold Coast Titans. No. This is a side with rugby league history. It's got no. a 70-year history or something, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, a big history that goes back three quarters of a century. Yeah. You know, a lot of people don't understand this. You know, I mean, there was rugby league in New Zealand, as you know, before the Warriors. Conversely, there was rugby league in Queensland before the Broncos. You know, the Broncos came in 1988, but up until then, we saw basically world-class players playing at Lang Park in the match of the day week in, week out. No doubt, no different, I suppose, to Carlaw Park when you had the best of the Auckland competition, if you like, coming together. Yep. Uh, and things obviously change. The world becomes smaller and the game become more professional and a lot of money involved. And don't forget, players in Queensland used to go to New South Wales because of poker machine revenue. Queensland licensed clubs, whether it was your RSL club, sports club, leagues club, they did not have poker machines. So basically that became a huge incentive and people like Beetson came to Sydney and of course he was there from the get-go in 1980 for State of Origin 1. But coming back to Redcliffe They've been a terrific club. They invest a lot of money in terms of junior development and nursery. They've got good feeder systems with the Capras in Rockhampton and also Redcliffe as their feeder sides. I don't agree with the fact that they haven't come up with a name, whether it's the Moreton Bay Dolphins or the yeah, North yeah, Brisbane Dolphins yeah, yeah. or the Sunshine Coast yeah, Dolphins. Right. I agree we with can you. talk about that another time. Mm. Uh, it would have happened under Ken Arthurson and John Quayle, but it's happened. They've got the licence. They've done a really good job in getting this together. I think it'll be a great night. It's history in the making here. I just think the Roosters will have just too much firepower on the night. All right, Costo Corner then, finally. So we're going Warriors at home tonight, Panthers at home to the Bronx, Eagles over the Dogs, Cowboys over the Raiders. He's picking the Rabbitohs 
away at the Sharks. Roosters over the Dolphins. Finally, West Tigers and Titans wraps it all up. It's interesting, Phil Rothfield, who's arguably one of the most influential people in Sydney Rugby League media, uh, you know, his mail is that Wigan weren't too fussed on letting Bateman leave and come to the West Tigers, and they've decided, the Tigers, to invest $800,000 in the Englishman, who's obviously a seasoned campaigner, and he's arrived late, he's not playing, and, you know, there was a, a lot of issues in getting him into the country and, and whatnot. Look, Tim Sheens is, you know, he's trying to work miracles here. They finished, goodness sake, they finished with the wooden spoon last year, but they they come back to Leichhardt for this first up game against the Gold Coast and I you mean I think it's going to be a work in progress for uh, for Sheens but uh, you know, I mean I, I, I'm I'm I think that uh, you know look this is a game that could go either way but I, I'm willing to tip uh, I'm willing to tip the Tigers here um, I, I don't know why but the fact that they've got Coruscant there you know he's a terrific player he's going to take a lot of heat off the halves. And uh, I just think playing at Leichhardt, I think they're going to get a lot of crowd. Sheens has done... Look, they still finally remember him and Marshall and all the magic mm, tricks from mm, all those years yeah. ago. And it's going to be his 250th game in charge of the Tigers. So when we talk about Bennett, we talk about Bellamy, you've got to talk about Sheens as well, his record at the Raiders. Look, he's one of the wise men of rugby league. And if anyone can resurrect the black and goals, the West Tigers, that joint venture between the Magpies and Belmain, it's Tim Sheens, and I think they'll get off to a winning start against the Gold Coast, but I think it may well be very, very tight at Leichhardt. 1-12. to 12. Uh, Fantastic that you're mentioning Brookvale and Leichhardt and that the games are still going back there. We're at pains here in New Zealand to try and convince New Zealand rugby to take these games out of these big, empty, concrete stadiums where 10,000 people get lost and actually get an atmosphere, get a crowd. And also just on those coaches, I heard a great thing on um, the build-up last night to the game. Bellamy 64 Bennett is almost mm. 10 years older than that, and so is Sheen. So to have a couple of men still coaching at that age, I mean, past 60, I'm talking in their 70s, it's quite wild when you think about it. Well, it is. You know, I mean, Wayne Bennett was coaching going back many years ago. You mean, I was, when I was a kid growing up, Martin, I followed Souths in Brisbane. They were the Magpies playing at Davies Park in what's now very, very trendy West End on the banks of the Brisbane River, Davies Park. And they had the likes of the late Peter Jackson, Mel Meninga, Gary Belcher. There's some names that perhaps some mm. of your old time listeners will, uh, you know, think, wow, I haven't heard his name for a while. And that's the team that I followed. But of course, everything changed with the Broncos in 88. Meninga and Belcher and a few others, including Jacko, they'd already gone down to Canberra because, you know, things were moving and there was big money being offered. So good players from Redcliffe and South and Winner Manly. There's another old club from Queensland. That was Wally Lewis's old club with Gene Miles and Greg Dowling and players like that. So, you know, look, is we obviously come from a rugby league background. You know, it, it, the game is obviously, uh, you know, changing, ever-changing. A new team this year. Um, the Warriors back home after the two years of dislocation, which has been well documented. I think there's a lot to look forward to. We've had the politics, unfortunately, overshadow the start. There was no season launch. We didn't touch on that last week. That's right. It's amazing isn't it? No season launch, but I just hope we get good crowds, particularly to those boutique suburban grounds that you're alluding to with Brookvale and Leichhardt and so forth. Um, and and I think, I think it'll be a remarkable season, so many twists and turns, and uh, that middle, that fat middle will be very fat, and I think most teams are a chance of at least making the eight, and that's probably what the administrators always wanted. That's what John Quayle and Ken Arthurson said when the Warriors uh, came into the comp with the Cowboys and uh, we should be mindful of that because the unpredictability of our competition is one of the big, big talking points of our game and a point of difference between so many other codes around the world. Costo, thank you so much, mate. Beautiful. Drill.